Greetings, Hobo Techers. I'm coming at you from McCall, Idaho. Check out this beautiful scenery behind me. Just saw a bunch of geese flying around. Billy's rocking out behind me in the gazelle. He's blasting some music, so I decided to come all the way back here and uh, do an intro for this next video for you guys. Today I'm bringing you another retro video of a van build modification that I did last November. That is November 2017. It's a modification for the water heater. It allows you to run the water heater on both electric and propane. I'm going to show you the entire installation from start to finish, and I'm going to show you it in working in the end. I know one of the questions I'm going to get right away is, okay, Tom, you installed it in November 2017. It is now September 2018. How do you like it? Well, let me tell you, it's been invaluable. It's been a great modification. It's like the best 80 bucks I spent on the van, really. Because it has allowed me, anytime that I'm plugged in at a campsite, uh, or plugged in at a friend's house or when I was plugged in at my dad's house it allows me to have unlimited hot water it only takes 400 watts so you can actually run this off your solar pretty easily if you have a say like a four to 600 watt solar system you can actually generate hot water from electricity now generally what I do is I just kick it out when I run the generator because I don't want to drain my batteries just to have hot water. I have done it once or twice, but most of the time it's just cheaper and easier to cook on the generator. It's been great uh, because really for no extra money at all when I'm running my generator, I can get hot water and not use up my valuable propane because these, the road truck only comes with a five gallon propane tank, which is built in. So if I run out of propane, I have to go get it filled up. That's you know, that's a real pain in the butt if you're trying to camp in one place for a couple weeks. We've been here for several weeks, and uh, I've had to go into town. I had to go into town today to refill my propane because my refrigerator runs off propane, my stock refrigerator. So, yes, it's a great mod. I highly recommend it. You can get the kit on Amazon. I have it on my Amazon page called Hybrid Heat. Now, this works for any of the Suburban 6-gallon heaters. I know there's another six, another brand six gallon heater out there. I'm I almost positive that this company that sells the hybrid heat sells it for that wa hot water heater as well. Hybrid heat does make models for the larger and for the other. I don't know what the other company is called. If you follow the link on my Amazon page, go to hobotech.tv slash Amazon. You can scroll down to the section with the hybrid heat heater. Click on that. And then it'll take you to the Amazon page where you can select, if you don't have the six gallon Suburban, you can go in there and you can pick the one for your, for your water heater. Again, if you're interested in doing this installation yourself, you can buy the kit on Amazon. It's relatively affordable. I'm telling you, it's gonna pay for itself over and over again in the propane that you don't burn. It really extends your boondocking because when you need hot water, you can, you can just run the electric and get hot water, save your propane for your propane refrigerator or for your cooking. Uh, it has really extended my propane cr quite a bit because now I don't have to burn propane every day when I want to wash dishes or take a shower or something. So I hope you guys enjoyed this install video. It's going to be a little on the long side, but it is very comprehensive. It's going to show you from start to finish how to install this on your RV. Camco Hybrid Heat, and this is for the six gallon. You can see it's for the six gallon tanks. This is the entire kit that what you uh, it will allow you to make hot water from electricity instead of using propane. So, well, you can use propane and electric at the same time. Let me restate that. All this does is adds electric, uh, the electric option to your hot water heater. It doesn't replace the propane. Um, in fact, you can run them both at the same time if you really want to heat things up quick. So basically what's in the kit is uh, the heater, then this little piece that hooks to your hot water tank that measures the temperature, then they give you a switch that you can put on your wall to turn it on and off, and then a plug that you plug into your existing uh, 110, 120 lines. 
and call it 120 on here. You know, I say 110 because that's what we used to call it back in the day. Uh, when I was doing electrical work, it was 110. Now, now it seems to be called 120. The hardest part is this part here, drilling the hole through your hot water tank uh, shroud to run the wires. Uh, running the, I think for me, running the AC cable is going to be the hardest part because my hot water tank is right in there, right under the bed, and there's no. There's no uh, AC current on this side of the van. It's all on this side of the van. I have the inverter, I have the outlets. There's an outlet up here. There's an outlet up here for the air conditioner, but there's absolutely nothing. There's no 110, 120, whatever you want to call it over here. So I need to figure out, am I going to run something under here, which is, I'm probably gonna to have to do something and run it under here because I do need to have 110 over here if I'm going to run the hot water tank because I can't, I'm not going to run like extension cords. Note to self, this is for the hybrid hot water tank install. I'm going to do this step now and then I'm going to do the rest of the install on a different day. So I shut off shore power and this is the cable that comes with the kit. Uh, basically, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take this and plug this into one of your outlets. Now, I don't actually have any available outlets to plug this into. I could technically hang it from up there, but that would be so ridiculous, uh, or run it down the wall. But um, really, I don't have any additional or any free outlets anywhere near the hot water tanks. The hot water tanks here, right? Here's the hot water tank, and here's where all the power is over here. So it's kind of like, okay, I don't really have much of a choice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just cut this off, cut this plug off. On this side of the cord are the connections for the switch and stuff. And that's all color coded for hot, neutral, and ground. So instead of plugging into an outlet, um, I'm gonna run it off of this unused circuit breaker. This, this circuit breaker was originally for the charger, the battery charger that came with the van. Uh, as part of road truck setup. Uh, I no longer use this. This is an unused breaker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to chop the plug off of this and I'm gonna run this, this cable after it's cut off. I'm gonna run it up through here. Basically just connect this right to the circuit breaker. So when I don't wanna use the electric hot water at all, I want that disconnected. Uh, I can just switch this off and this is gonna be my, my safety. If there's a, ever a short, in this wire, uh, that's gonna that's gonna save the boat. Okay, we're back here on the hybrid hot water install, and I decided I'm gonna put a hole right here through from this side to the outside to run the wires through. I'm gonna try to put it right here on this corner, and uh, that should provide sufficient clearance and everything. Let the wires come through the shortest distance possible instead of trying to do it on the other side. The other side would be easier to do from the outside. But I'm going to try to just do this from the inside. I also need to determine where am I going to mount the thermostat. Um, I, can either cut, I can either cut a piece here out or I could try to cut a piece like up here. It looks, got, it looks like straps right here. So I guess I'd want to cut it in here. Um, that's the hard part, because I'm gonna need to get my razor and cut it pretty precisely. I don't wanna lose any heat if I don't have to. And then I have this, which I put on top, which is the uh, Reflectix cover. I'll put this over top of the thermostat, wherever the hole is, and that should give me back some of my thermal efficiency. Okay, once I run the wires through that, I'll just use some of my clay insulation to prevent bugs or anything else from coming up through there. Now it's as simple as putting, this is the, uh, basically the heater that goes inside the tank. So I'm just gonna fish this through the hole 
to the outside. And give it enough slack, basically, so that it's easy to take in and out. So I should be able to run it all the way to here, back to where this connector comes through, and kind of at this point, we can use some of this clay insulation stuff. Okay, there we go. I put the insulation around the wires, and then feed them through like that. And then I'll push the clay in from the other side as well. Okay, so here's the wires coming through the other side. Basically, this will come down and go into the heater. You know, it's not really. I think that might actually be enough slack. So basically, it needs to be enough slack so that when you unscrew it, when you screw it in. Okay, I'm afraid I need to I need to give it another inch or two. All right. Okay, I kind of forgot about something. Uh, what I need to do is I need to, I need to clip this off, clip this off, I'm going to use this green wire, which is pretty thick, to run power down to here. This is the original power coming from the circuit breaker. It's not hooked up yet. Let's go ahead and snip it. There's all kinds of noise going on. This is uh, about the time everybody's coming out from work here, so you're gonna hear trucks and all kinds of things. There's people out there moving. All right, so I'm pretty sure it was the white one I need to cut. And there goes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheels. I could buy that kid a muffler. Okay, so all I'm gonna do Real simple. Strippers. They're not the good kind of strippers, these kind of strippers. Wow, that's pretty thin. I mean, this is AC wiring, so uh, the thing is it's only 400 watts. So that being as thin as it is, isn't really a big deal. So all I'm doing is really just extending this wire. There we go. Like that. So really, all I need to do on one side, wire nut these two, and on the other side, wire nut these two. So let's go ahead and do that. Tight as I can with the hand. Electrical tape, because I don't do shrink wrap, it takes too long. I know shrink wrap's like the new thing. This is how we did stuff back in old school. It's really hard to do this with the camera in the way. It's not fun at all. But, okay, so there we go. Feed this all the way back out. Hope, pray, that's long enough. I need to drill a hole through here, and a hole through here. Allow me to run the cables underneath the board, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drill this one first. It's pretty easy. Okay. Be careful, I need the hot water tank. Okay, get enough, get enough creek. All right, so I do know for sure that the wire coming from the heater goes directly. Is it gonna fit through there? Yeah, it is. That's why I used a half inch. 
kind of figured I'd just need to uh, need to throw the push the wire cap through too. There we go. I think you guys can see that. It's just running right out to the heater heater module or whatever they call it. And this plugs right into the white. Just like that. So that's one connection done. Next part of the install is I'm gonna use this exact and I to cut a section here that says it needs to be as flat as possible, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, well I just cut into that for nothing. Now we're gonna see if this is gonna be flat. Okay, so I cut this piece out. This is what we got. All right, they give you this no name brand double-sided tape. It's just as simple as sticking that stuff on. Just so you get an idea of how the fit is. I just eyeballed that and got it just right. So uh, I still be able to hook up the wires up top here, which makes it easy. Uh, I'm leaving the thermostat set at 120 because it has an adjustment here. You can see that. It's got an adjustment from uh, 90 to 150, the default's 120. I'm just gonna leave it there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and peel the tape off. I'm just gonna stick this in there. And it's not gonna go anywhere. Put a little pressure on it. It's, it's fine, it's not going anywhere. So the next part is just to hook up the wires as they're supposed to be hooked up. I'm pretty much in the home stretch here. This cover goes on top. This is how I broke this, is I put the cover on it, test it out, and I couldn't get the cover off. <laughs> so I was just peeling and pulling and pulling and it finally broke. So it'll be fine. I'll just tape it down or whatever. The instructions here say, and they're pretty well put together. It says that the two red wires coming from the thing, the uh, heater element, one goes to the uh, AC, which we did. The other one goes to the um, thermostat, the black wire. This is the black wire. I put this on earlier. This is the thermostat. According to this, the black wire goes to the front. So we hook that to this. One-handed, I'm gonna show you how much of a pro I am. And there you go. It's like the blue from the four foot extension cord connects to the other one. So here's our four foot extension cord, which I already put everything on it. Here's a switch, which is, I don't have that plugged in all the way. That was just temporary. But. Uh, so this part, the blue, there you go. So this wire here, that connects to here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, because the switch, I'm actually gonna mount the switch up here. So it's gonna run down the wall, connect to the harness. So we wanna make this go through here. do is I want to prevent the wood, prevent the wood that goes on top of this from smacking these wires around. And I think they're going to be just fine. In fact, I know they are, because they're actually right past, you see this edge, right? They're below the edge, so I know the wood isn't going to mess with them. So there we go, we got the, uh, got the blue wire run through, which goes to this, on the four foot cord. 
Okay, even though this is broke, I'm going to put it on anyway. Let's see, it's not going to do anything. But it will kind of protect, somewhat protect the screws. Next part is actually to run the cable for the switch and install the switch itself. Okay, I put the Reflectix cover back over, which covers the thermostat and everything, all the wires. Uh, I could still slide it forward to, fix, to access this if I need to. But uh, this, this little bit of extra insulation makes a really big deal. Um, it really, this really helps in keeping the hot water hot longer. So highly, highly recommend doing this. So here we go, we have the extension. This is the ground which is supposed to get grounded. It says to the hot water heater, but um, I can guarantee you that hot water heater is grounded to the in, to the vehicle. So all I'm going to do is just stick this on any surface that I can ground it to, even the battery if I want to. We got our blue wire and our power wire. So really, it just comes down now to. Uh, Install the switch. So we have the switch. The gold prong goes to the green wire. So we just hook that in there. And it says the blue goes to the middle silver wire. So I'm going to put the blue there. And then obviously the last one, the black one, goes on the bottom. There we go. All right. That's better. All right, we got our switch in place. Boy, it sure wiggles a lot. Oh, <laughs> uh, well staple up those wires later. I just want to kind of get this done. Okay, as you can see, I skipped a part showing you guys how I took the wall apart to run the cable down it. I ran the cable down the wall, right at the bottom there. And then you just hook up the colors. Green to green, blue to blue. And then you do the same over here, blue. And the only thing I have left to do is this ground. And since this, since that wire isn't very long, and I don't really want to hook it to the battery cable because that goes to the shunt, I'm just going to drill a tiny pilot hole in the um, furnace because the furnace is grounded to the chassis. I'm going to go ahead and drill this pilot hole, put the screw in, and I want to get this board back on, get my bed back in here. What's going on is that this is the... Come on, Odin. Do your thing. Come on. Go somewhere or not. Move. Okay, so here's where we left off. The rest of the system's already been wired. I only have left to put the temperature part inside the, uh, or the heater part inside the hot water tank. And hook this up. This is the three wires that come from the uh, power cord. I just, all I did was I just cut I just cut the plug off and um, marked the wires because one of them's green, one of them's white, one of them's black. Now this actually has a green, can't see it on camera, this has a green central core and uh, so I know that's the ground. That actually goes to the um, this copper grounding plate. The white I marked with this tape. That goes to here. And then the black goes to this, which you see is switched off, goes to this breaker. And that's it. Once I do that and I switch the breaker on, power will be sent to the heater system. So I actually have two switches on this. It's going to be the breaker and then the switch, the, the red switch, toggle switch that I installed yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to hook up the ground first. Now, all the, now the ground bar is actually full, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this one 
and I'm just going to add two to one. You're not really supposed to do this, but uh, fact of the matter is I have no choice here. Ugh. It's up there good. It's not going anywhere. So this is a white. So the white's going to go here. And fortunately, these are open. Ugh. Nope. All right, big guns. Ah, oh, much better. I am always into my power tools, as you guys know. Get this bitty in here, and then tighten her down. And that's in there nice and tight. Okay, I think that's it. Hurrah! Give it a good yank. It's in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. I can't believe I used every single circuit in here, AC and DC. You know, it's funny. When I took the charger off this, oh, was it six months ago? I said, you know what, someday, I'm gonna need this breaker, this empty breaker for something. And bada bang, guess what? All right, now that we got that complete, the next and final part of the job is to put the heater core inside the tank. So let's go ahead and get messy. Okay, so there is no uh, pressure in the hot water line, but I'm gonna still be careful to get this out. But I don't like to see this white liquid. I bet you it's probably still more crap in the bottom of the tank. Oh, there we go. Just making sure the threads are clean. They gave you a little thing of Teflon tape, which you use for the threads. They give you this, which is the same size as that. This kind of goes into here. Then they give you the smaller adapter for, I think that's a, for a different type of heater. They give you this pressure fitting. And this fitting, and then this, which has the little bushing inside. So this goes into here. And this goes into here. Actually, I don't think this bushing, let me check the instructions. I don't think that compression thing needs Teflon. Now we take just some of the Teflon tape that they provide and wrap the threads a couple of times. Decently tight, not super tight. Should link. <laughs> yeah, I have to. I have to uh, agree that this has to be an anode. Please tell me I have enough slack to do this. If I don't, that wheel is gonna suck. Talk about cutting that buzz. cross my fingers that's gonna do it so now before I do anything else I'm gonna pressurize the tank make sure there's no leaks even before I check this because I don't want to do anything if there's a leak the pump is on now the drop I'm filling up my fresh water at the same time I uh, just top the tank off with the hot water faucet open to let all the air out when the water started running I shut the faucet off and now we have a perfectly good seal. So guess what time it is? It's the moment of truth to see if this thing actually works. Okay guys, moment of truth. I got shore power hooked up. I'm gonna trip this breaker and cross my fingers that it doesn't trip back off or there's no fire or smoke or anything melting. 
Right, so far, so good. So here's the switch. So it's off. And it lights up when it's on. Okay, so here's the thermostat. As you guys well know. That's room temperature. And that's the temperature of the water. Now it says 64 degrees. And it is 350. So let's see what happens. If it works at all, it should start ticking up slowly. It's only 400 watts, so it's not really a monster when it comes to speed. Most people say it takes about an hour for it to heat up to 120. So we should see some results fairly quickly if it's working. Um, about 10 minutes, we'll check it and see if it's creeped up a few degrees. Actually, it says, it looks like since we've just been sitting here, it creeped up 0.4. Anyway, uh, I just filled it with house water, so um, it's still mixing in the tank. I wouldn't go by that just yet. Okay, here we are at 6.30. So we're 20 minutes short of three hours. And it finally stopped ticking up. So I'm guessing, uh, even though the thermostat was set for 120, you know how the mechanical ones work is they actually uh, continue to heat a few degrees past the setting, and then it should start to cool down, and then uh, once it gets a few degrees below the setting, it will kick back on again. So it might be set for like a 5 degree or 3 degree difference. But uh, finally, the temperature stopped climbing, so I know that the thermostat has worked. It's close enough to 120 degrees for me. It's still, this still is not uh, burn your hand off instantly temperature, which you know I try to avoid. I don't like I don't like to have to mix cold water with my hot water to use it. So um, I'm pretty stoked. I have to say that the hybrid hot water mod, the electric mod, is a success. We have no leaks, no electrical problems. Thermostat works just fine. Um, you see how I have the switch mounted down here next to the refrigerator? It's really the only place I could put it. In fact, it is counting down. It just ticked down to 125.1, so the heater element is absolutely shut off at this point. I'll keep an eye on this, and I'll see when it kicks back on. It might be like 117, 118 degrees, something like that. I'm going to kick back on. But that is a definite success. Um, pretty good for a 60, was a 60 or $70 kit. Uh, even though it took three hours to heat up. That's electric, guys. It's using no propane, so that's pretty awesome. And the thing is, I can just leave this on now. I just leave the switch on as long as I'm plugged in here. And it will just maintain this temperature indefinitely. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this on. And uh, I want to make sure that it does maintain the hot water temperature over the next couple of days. So, pretty awesome. So that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and most definitely share. Thank you guys. Catch you later. <laughs> Billy's rocking out to some obscure European dead bands. <laughs> I was just coming outside to come get you. That's like the second time I scared the crap out of you today. Yeah. Uh, you haven't been on film for a couple of weeks, so I figured I'd surprise you. I was almost done with my Australian holiday, and uh, I was headed to Ireland. Oh, okay. See if you had any... Uh, Oh, you want another beer? Yeah, I forgot. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin.